The First Night of Howler Garden, Words and Pictures by Benson Shum. First Night of Howler Garden. Uh, from my little howler, Brinley. Welcome to Howler Garden. Your first night of Howler Garden will be full of furry fun wear activities, and you'll meet many new friends. Most importantly, when the full moon rises, our students will transform into their true wear selves for the first time. We can't whoo, wait to celebrate with you. Do I have to go to Howler Garden? Asked Sophia. What if I don't transform into a werewolf like you and dad? You'll be your wonderful self, and that's already enough, Mom replied. Don't worry. We'll always love you no matter who you are, said Dad. But Sophie didn't want to remain human. She had heard from Molly, a first grader, that her friend's cousin's brother failed to become a werewolf on his first full moon. Rumor had it he got kicked out of Howler Garden. Sophie did not want to be alone. She wanted to be part of a pack. <gasps> She's still human! So she gathered all her werewolf things, put on her favorite werewolf headband, and repeated werewolf thoughts to herself. I'm a howler. I'll have fun. I'll have fangs and a bushy tail. Sophie felt ready for school. Until the first bell rang. Good evening, Sophie, said her teacher. Ready to join our pack? Sophie whimpered. We'll be back soon, said Mom. You've got this, said Dad. Sophie looked at the new faces. Her tummy gurgled. Then she overheard one of her classmates, a girl named Emma. I'm not afraid. I'll definitely transform. I'm told I'm the best tracker in my family. Sophie was worried. She knew a strong sense of smell was a sign you might turn into a werewolf, but she hadn't even tried tracking anything. First, they practiced how to move like a wolf. Gallop, trot, pounce. Sophie stumbled. Wah! Next, they learned to listen to the whispers of the wind. Sophie strained her ears but heard no howls. Then they tried to track. Sophie never caught a scent. Ah, choo! She wished she was more like Emma, who found her bone right away. Sophie seemed to lack basic werewolf skills. Was this a sign she would stay human? At recess, Sophie snuck away. She knew the other kids would never accept a human as part of their pack. Then she heard a sniffle. Did Teddy feel the same way? Want to share my wolfie grams? Sophie asked. My favorite, Teddy replied. Thank you. Then Emma found them. Is that Vicky Fang? She asked. Look, I have Lola Fang. Can I play too? Randall asked as he trotted over. Maybe Howler Garden wasn't so bad. Maybe they'd all still like her, even if she stayed human. After recess, Sophie and her new friends continued to train. She might not have basic werewolf skills, but with a little help, she caught on fast. Found it. After all the activities, it was time to rest. But it wasn't long before the clouds parted and the full moon appeared. It's your moment, Howler Gardeners. Her teacher announced on the count of three, lift your face to the moon and call your were self. One, two, three, look at the moon and transform. All of Sophie's fears came rushing back. Her heart pounded as she counted. One. Then Teddy reached over and held her hand. Two. Sophie decided she was ready. Three. To remain human if that was her fate. Sophie opened her eyes. She glanced at a mirror. Instead of two human hands, she saw two soft padded paws, a short snout, and a bushy tail. Sophie looked around and discovered that Teddy had changed too. And so had the others. They had done it. They were werewolves. But then she heard a sniffle. Emma was crying in the corner. She was still human. As Sophie approached her, Emma said, Now I can't be part of the pack. I'm not one of you. Sophie placed her paws in Emma's hands. Human or werewolf, we are always a pack. And nothing will ever change that. Together they trotted and they tracked. They perked their ears to the wind and they pounced. And Sophie and her friends howled and growled until the last bell rang. First night of Howler Garden. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.